Hello, everyone. Uh, I am uh, Ian Tashner, as Dr. O'Dell kindly introduced. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about a project uh, that one of my undergraduates, Alex Soliweis, kind of came up with. Um, he wanted to test all of these CBD oils that we see all over, everywhere. Gas stations, you know, all everywhere. Literally every tent, uh, every festival you go to, it's everywhere. Um, so we want to check to see, hey, what they say on the label is what is in the bottle. And we did find some surprising results. Um, but uh, hopefully I know how to use this thing. All right, excellent. So uh, everyone, I'm sure, has heard the news of the deaths associated with vaping. Um, and it is sad to say that it is not the nicotine uh, pods. It is actually what, what they call these dank pods. That's the name of them. Um, they're an illegal uh, source of cannabinoids that they put in these little cartridges and uh, students, everyone would, who would buy them, would vape them. Okay, there's no regulation on those. They can put whatever they want, all right, in these pods. So that's kind of, uh, that's, that's horrible. That's absolutely awful. As a synthetic chemist and analytical chemist, that's a no-no. That's a big no-no. The FDA needs to crack down on this. Um, so I kind of want to bring up just kind of what Indiana was to cannabis. Because uh, Indiana actually has a very rich history of cannabis cultivation. So, cannabis in Indiana. So, it kind of started off, of course, way, 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 way back in the day. Um, they used it for almost everything. Clothes, fibers, oils, etc. Um, in World War II, during, or sorry, during World War II, Jasper County, they received an award for their efforts in hemp cultivation. Incredible, all right? Indiana is a prime place to grow hemp. Um, Eli Lilly, so this is Eli Lilly III, who really pushed the Eli Lilly, the pharmaceutical company, up. And his 1907 thesis uh, was published in Journal of American Pharmacology, and it was on cannabis sativa and all of the medical benefits. He then took his studies to uh, Connor Prairie and Greensville, just right outside of Indianapolis, where he developed a strain uh, that was called Cannabis Americana. Okay, it's a very, it, it, at the time, it was a very strong strain of cannabis that they would do an extraction on, and then they would sell this liquor uh, for anything from cramps, pain, uh, sleeping disorders. It was used all over. Okay, so, excellent. So it's been used forever. Hemp's been used for all sorts of things, but now CBD is legal throughout the United States. Um, so I have two molecules, CBD and THC up there. If you noticed, they each share a common molecular formula, C21H30O2, okay? Means not much to anybody, okay? Um, not much to me either, and I'm an organic chemist. What means a lot to us, though, is these two structures. Now, that is beautiful. On the left, we have CBD. On the right, we have THC. That's the psychoactive component, or one of the psychoactive components that can cause, again, euphoria um, associated with the cannabis plant. CBD, not at all. Doesn't really hit the cannabinoid or the endocannabinoid system. A unique thing uh, is, as a synthetic chemist, we look at this and go, oh, that's really easy conversion. Uh, and you can do this. They've been doing this since the 60s, taking CBD, putting it in acidic media, and converting it to THC. What do you know? So it's, very, it's simplistic, OK? So you can probably do it in your backyard, all right? Which is why, again, we need regulation. We need to know what is in our oils. So, the reason, again, all of this started was because Indiana passed this uh, Industrial Hemp Act, um, allowing for, again, a licensed individual to grow hemp. Um, but there are some caveats. Uh, the plant or plant material cannot have over 0.3% THC. But they're just saying THC. There's THCA that also can be converted to THC with heat. So what is this 0.3%? It's a gray area, 
Okay, we need to have all the cannabinoids identified and we need to quantify them. Okay, so again, my student Alex Soliweis, this really intrigued him. And I love science, I love chemistry, absolutely love it. If I can get a student to enjoy it just like I do, I'm on board. So, signed up. We go down, we, we go in northwest Indiana, we grab all the CBD oils you can think of from every gas station, corner store that you can buy, okay? And we collected them, okay? And we went down to Bloomington and used, sorry, and utilized their mass spectroscopy facility, okay? And what we obtained, okay, this took about a day to separate all of the cannabinoids out, at least the ones we were interested in, okay? And the ones I'm going to highlight, of course, are, uh, where are we here? There's CBD and THC. Now, these numbers, that's just relative numbers. It doesn't mean that, oh, in this right here, this THC, it's tons. Oh, my goodness. No, that could mean little bit, all right? This is all relative. But the important thing is we were able to separate all of the cannabinoids so we can quantify them and say, hey, you have the acceptable level of cannabinoids or what's on the back of the label is what's in the bottle. So after testing, we had, I don't know, we have six that we tested, all right? And we built this nice curve up of different concentrations. We determined that it, they were all linear so we can now take this and take our oils that we don't, we have no clue the concentration and analyze them and actually quantify them. So real quick, here's kind of what we would do. Here's just CBD, nice linear regression we have here, our trend line. And we can put our X value, it's right in there, and determine again, our concentration, which is what we're looking for. Okay, we want to find out all of the cannabinoids that are present in these extracts, these oils, because people are consuming them just looking at the back going, oh, that looks great. So to end everything, uh, I just want to show two of the products. Um, on the uh, left-hand side here, uh, we have product A, which is a pharmaceutical grade, which was nice that they provided us that. They are right in compliance. All right, I only highlighted two of the cannabinoids because those are the popular ones. Uh, but right here, you can see CBD, they, exactly what they stated, they had on there. They said they had less than 0.3%, or well, on the back it was 0.2%. Indeed, they did contain that THC, just a little bit, which is not gonna harm you. Now, here's our gas station, all right, right here. So this is not saying this is a ton of THC and you're gonna drink the bottle and you're gonna be fried out of your mind, no. Okay, my time's almost up, uh, so right here, this is just saying that there's more THC than CBD. So what's on the label is not remotely accurate because this label says zero THC, zero. I don't see zero here. That doesn't look like zero. So kind of the take home, because it is zero, I'm run running over time, uh, is again, we need to regulate. All right, we need to know what is in our product. We don't want, you know, Billy Bob making us the moonshine in his backyard. Um, thank you, everyone, for listening.